Hello everybody, my name is Anjasta Balakrishna, I'm a legal intern of Lexis and Company and today I'm going to talk about trespass against person. To be more specific, the topics of assault and battery. So um, before I begin with my topic, I want to say welcome back to our channel. Thank you for visiting our channel. Uh, and if it's your first time visiting our channel, please press like and subscribe button in order to get more law related videos in the upcoming days. So uh, let's go back to our topic, trespass. Trespass is basically something that encompasses both civil as well as criminal aspects. And um, it is basically an entrance committed with an intention to cause or fear or frighten or insult or harass a person. Um, it can be done to a person's property or to a person's body. And um, civil, it is basically a civil as well as criminal offenses, uh, offense because it can lead to injuries in the form of breach to somebody's rights. It uh, trespass basically breaches the rights, causes injuries and harms and hence can be classified as both civil as well as criminal. <laughs> I'm sorry. A trespass is defined as a deliberate, unjustifiable intrusion into another person's body or property, as I mentioned before. This is the true correct definition. And um, intention is basically something that is known as fundamental component of a trespass because you have to have an intention in order to um, trespass. When you're trespassing, you have, to you have to have an intention to be a nuisance or to uh, cause inconvenience to the other party, to cause harm to the other party. The intention is the fundamental factors. There are two types of trespasses done to a person. In today's uh, PP, uh, video, we're going to focus upon um, trespass against a person. So there are two types of trespass that are done against a person, which is assault and battery. Assault is basically um, instilling fear in the mind of another person while battery is actually physically harming the person. So let's start with assault. Assault, as I mentioned before, is instilling fear in the mind of another person that damage and harm can occur to that person. And generally something that occurs previously to battery. It, 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 you now there's A and B and A uh, through some of his actions, through some of his gest gestures, threatens B or um, causes a sort of fear in B that A might harm him or cause him injury, bodily injury. That uh, sort of activity, it can be done implicitly or explicitly, it can be done by that person itself, gestures can be done by the person itself or he can do it by, through another person. However, that sort of activity is known as assault. Uh, and there should be a sort of apprehension caused to the mind of a person. Now, basically, if you're pointing a gun um, to a person standing behind that person, then there's no sort of fear. He does not know what's happening behind him. So uh, that does not account to assault. But when you're doing it, you have to cause some sort of fear. So it should be proved that you were in fear. You were you were living in a fear and apprehension <coughs> that something may happen to you. So um, apprehension is something that's fundamental in the case of assault. There are some essential elements that has to be satisfied in order to prove assault. The first one is that the intention to induce dread in somebody's mind. So as I mentioned before, there should be an intention. The next one is that there should be a capacity. The person who is causing the dread should have the capability in order to fulfill or carry out the threat. Now, if a um, person who does not have the physical abilities in order to carry out a threat is threatening someone, you might not it might not cause apprehension of fear in your mind. So you must have the capability in order to you know, complete your threat. Next one is that apprehension must be created in the mind of the other person. As I mentioned before, apprehension has to be created. <clears throat> the fourth one is that the person who is threatened should be conscious about the threat, should be continuously wandering in your mind that there is such a threat against you and against your life. Then only would it count to assault. The next one is battery. Battery is basically the use of force on another person without any legitimate reason. And it can happen directly as well as indirectly touching another person against his context or aggressively. So basically, when you touch a person aggressively without his consent and without any justifiable reason comes to battery. Um, now, slapping a person directly um, is something that is done directly. Slapping a person is done directly while you're sending a dog behind a person or, you know, purposely putting a banana peel in order for them to slip and fall can be known as indirect methods of battery. Um, according to section 350 of the Indian Penal Code, battery is defined as the use of criminal force because you have to use force in order to harm a person. Um, 
in order to constitute battery it's important that there's bodily contact or physical contact between the parties it's not enough that you use your words or you use um, verbal communication there should be a physical contact and physical injuries to the other person the elements of battery is that there should be explicit or implicit as i mentioned before physical interaction without any probable cause so there should be physical interaction without any problem because there should be force it should be done with force it cannot it's not done lightly or something just you know touching a person uh, touching a person is wrong without their consent but then there should be some sort of force and this should be done voluntarily you threatening a person to go and harm another person does not account the battery it should be done voluntarily now um unintentionally touching a person or showing a person in crowded area or when you're standing in a bus you pushing a person or push leaning against a person does not account the battery it should be done intentionally so this are uh, is um the trespass against a person and uh, assault and battery accounts to trespass against a person i hope that you could understand what trespass against a person is and what assault and battery is and what constitutes an assault and battery if you understood the video and like the video please press the like and subscribe button i hope that you have a wonderful day ahead thank you for your time and understanding